Let's add animated blocks to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom animated blocks to Minecraft. So after we've added the animated item last tutorial, now it's on to blocks. They are a little bit more complicated because we require a custom block entity for them. But no worries, we'll get through this. I am sure of it. So of course, we're going to do this once again with GeckoLib. So if you didn't have this, I will link the tutorial where we added GeckoLib to our project. In the top right corner, it was the first entity tutorial. And once that is added to your project, we can then proceed to a block bench, first of all. So once again, we have a custom model over here in block bench. Once again, under file plugins, you need the GeckoLib animation utils plugin. That's quite important here. And then what you can do is when you make a new model, you can make a GeckoLib animated model. And I'll just call it test over here. Make sure under file GeckoLib model settings, that is a block item object type. And then you should be fine. Then you can add your cubes and or your bones. And the bones over here are needed to then later animate this particular block or item. All right, let's go back to our animated block over here. And once again, it's nothing fancy, but it will work for our purposes. You can see in the animate, I've just animated the gold cube here once again. So if we just let this play, you can see it's just going up and down once again. So it was once again, just a sine wave over here. So nothing too crazy, but still enough so that you can basically see how this is going to work. The block bench file, including everything else, of course, all available in the description below. Get a pass through an individual just as well. Now, how do we export this? It's actually very straightforward and pretty much the same thing as with the item. First of all, go to file export and then export GeckoLib model. This is the animated underscore block dot geojson. The geojson, once again, is just the 3D representation of this model. So geo stands for geometry. So this is the JSON file determining the 3D model. We then want to go to display and once again, change some of those values around so that it, you know, looks however you would want to, right? So for the third person, right and left, we have the first person, right and left, the head, you know, that doesn't really matter all that much how it looks on the ground how it looks in the frame and how it looks in the GUI or GUI once again. And that is then fine. Now this one can then be exported go by going to file, export, export GeckoLib display settings. So this is going to be the block model file for this particular block. So this is going to be animated underscore block .json. Save this as well. And there you go. Last but not least, let's go to the animate tab and then we can go to animation export animations and you can see I only have one animation the idle animation here and we can confirm and this is not a model animation this is actually animated underscore block dot animation dot json and now once again all three json files have been exported and we can continue along to IntelliJ. Now as I've said the animated block is a little more complicated as we actually require a custom block entity for it as well so let's just continue and see what we can see. So let's first of all make a custom block here in our custom package. Right click new class called the animated block. There you go. And this will extend the base entity block class right here. Hover over this implement methods. This is the new block entity method. And then we'll hover over again, create constructor matching super. If the parameter name here annoys you, click on it, press shift F6 and then choose properties. And then it is named correctly. We also want to make this public. And then we also need, and this is incredibly important, please pay attention here. This is the get render shape method right here. We want to override this and we want to return render shape dot entity block animated. So this is very important that we add this and then we're going to be fine. Here we're actually going to make a purposeful error so that we don't forget to add the entity once we have actually registered properly right here because we still need to add it to this. We can then go to the mod blocks class and actually register the block. We're just going to copy over the count portal. This is the animated block. Register block without block item is actually correct. We don't want a block item because we actually need to make a custom block item for this. And then this is going to be a new animated block with block behavior dot properties dot of we're just going to take material dot stone that's going to be fine and then also very important that we call no occlusion over here and then the animated block is done and the mod blocks class can be closed let's then open the entity package over here so this is in our block package entity package in the custom one we're going to make a new class called the animated block entity once again, of course, as I've already mentioned, everything is available to you in the description below. Get a pastor and individual just as well. So you can also copy over stuff. So no worries there. So we're going to make this a, an extending the block entity here. And once again, implements the I animatable. So we're going to just going to hover over this implement methods. 
implementing the two methods for the interface and then creating the constructor matching super and then that's going to be fine once again i will copy over some of the contents here but it is pretty much the same thing we just have the factory and returning the factory right here nothing too crazy and then we'll also have both a predicate as well as the contents of this so this is pretty much once again exactly the same thing that we had in the animated item and also in the entities as well we're also that's very important delete the first parameter here inside of the constructor and that's going to be fine we're going to replace the error here in just a moment so in our mod block entities class what we can do is we can just duplicate this and then change it around so this is going to be the animated underscore block underscore entity and here of course changing this to animated block entity there you go and then changing it here as well animated block entity colon colon new and then instead of the sign blocks, what we of course want is the animated block dot get. And that should be pretty much all that we need. Change the name here as well, of course, it's the animated underscore block underscore entity. And then we can reference this particular field over here. So we can say mod block entities dot animated block entity dot get. And then the animated block entity class is done. And then also return this right here. So we can return mod block entities dot animated block entity dot get dot create passing in the position and the state. Now both the block and the block entity classes are done. What we need then is some custom model and rendering once again. So in our entity package, we're gonna right click new package called client. And then instead of there, we need the animated block model and the animated block render. So we're gonna make the animated block model. And then we're also going to make the animated block renderer. Now the contents of this are incredibly similar to the contents of the animated item. So I'm just going to copy this over the time being and you can see once again we're extending the animated geo model this time of animated block entity should be fairly self-explanatory here and then here we're just returning the resource locations of the different texture model and animation file locations nothing that you've not seen already so should be fairly straightforward all things considered the render is a little bit special but not too crazy so we're going to extend the geo block renderer here of animated block entity once again we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super now here we want to delete the second parameter very important and then here we want to make an animated block model and then we also want to overwrite the get render type method and then let me just change this around a little bit so we can read this a little bit better there you go and here we want to return render type dot entity translucent get texture location passing in animatable and that is pretty much what we want to do right here now this renderer actually has to be registered properly now this is done in the event class we have a mod event client bus events for our custom renderer and here we actually want another one so let's just copy this over over here and then we'll just change this this is the register renderers and this is not the entity registers add later this is the entity dot register renderers there you go this is the event that we want to choose and we want to say event dot register block entity renderer mod block entities dot animated block item dot get and then the animated block renderer colon colon new so it's very important that this is under the mod bus with a value of client so this is only client side called and then this is also done that's right now the block would be animated inside of the world no worries at all however the item is still not done because for the item we actually do need the same things that we needed for the item as well so what we're going to do is first of all we're going to make the block item so in our item custom package right click new java class called the animated block item now luckily the good thing is that in theory you could reuse this particular block item class in this case so that's also important to note this is going to extend the block item class and it's also going to implement the i animatable. We're going to hover over this implement methods. Once again, the register controllers and the get factory method with constructor matching super. Now, in this case, I will actually just copy over the entire contents of this class. Once again, all of this is available to you in the description below. GitHub repository and an individual just as well. You can see we, of course, need the animated block item renderer right here. Also important to note here, for this predicate i'm actually not playing any animation if you want the same animation to play you would just literally use the same predicate that you did right here right where we're playing the idle animation you would literally use it here as well that's pretty much all that you need to do there in this case but i've decided not to add this so keep that in mind as well for the animated block item renderer and the model and what we'll do is we'll actually copy over the block from right here so the animated block model from the, over there this is going to be the animated block item model interestingly enough the contents of which can almost stay the same the only thing we want to change here is changing this to the animated block item and then we need to copy this and change the parameters right here 
And that is literally all that we need to do in this case. The files here are the same. And then we also want the item renderer. And this is pretty much the same as the animated item renderer. So we're going to drag this into the same package, holding control. This will duplicate it. And then I'm going to say animated block item renderer. We're just going to change this to the animated block item. And then here, instead of this, we want the animated block item model. And that is it. That is all that we need to do in this case. We can now import it into the class right here, animated block item renderer, alt and enter to import, and now no more errors should be present. We of course also want to register the actual item, so that should be something that we also need to do. So this is going to be the animated underscore block underscore item. This is the animated underscore block underscore item, of course being the animated block item, there you go. And then we also need to add as its first parameter, modblocks.animatedblock.get. And that will also register the block item, and that should be pretty much all that we need to do. So to quickly recap, because it has been quite a lot, for the block, you need a block renderer and a block model right here. This is for the block entity. This is just a normal block entity, just like the gem cutting station was as well, where you also need a block. You then need to register it in both the mod blocks class and the mod block entities class. This shouldn't be too crazy over here. That should be fine. And then just like we did with the animated item, we also need animated items for the block. So you can see we've added the animated block item model and the animated block item renderer, as well as an animated block item class itself that we're using to create a custom block item right here. Now, last but not least, we of course still need all of the JSON files that are associated with this. This includes the three that we have generated or exported from Blockbench. So we're going to start with those. This is the animation. So this is the animated underscore block animation file. There you go. Then the geo file this is the animated block geo file. Once again, there you go. The display settings file that we have generated goes into the mo block models folder. So this is animated underscore block in this case. And then also very important that we add the following. We actually can also add a textures field right here. Now this is needed for the particles. So this is going to be done manually over here. So this is just going to be particle, making sure that this is in singular particle. And we're just going to choose Minecraft colon block slash smooth underscore stone. That's going to be fine. That's some good particles. The item model itself is just like any other item model for a particular block. So we're just going to copy over the citrine here. This is the animated underscore block. And this just points back to the animated underscore block as well. We also need a block states JSON file. But once again, this is a normal block states JSON file. So nothing particularly interesting. Let's just copy it over quickly. Once again, of course, all of this is available to you. You can see this points to the normal block model file. So nothing that we have not seen plenty of times already. Let's not forget to add the texture as well. This is quite important. Otherwise, we would have a block without a texture. Now this actually went under machines and then this is the animated underscore block. Let's also add the translation over here, animated underscore block over here, and then animated under, uh, animated block, there you go. I'm not sure if this needs to be the block or the item. So let's just add both of them just to be sure. So this is the animated block underscore item. And this is also the animated block. We're going to have item tutorial mode animated block over here. And then here, actually, what we do not want is the item added. This should have the same name as the animated block registry object as well. Now, those are all of the steps. There are quite a few. I will agree with this. However, once again, everything available to you in the description below, get our parser and individual just as well. Let's go into the game and see if it works. All right, we found ourselves in Minecraft. So let's see, there it is. The animated block has been added to the game. And as you can see, the item itself is not actually animated. As I've said, in the custom item, I've not added the animation to the predicate, but you can of course do this. If I set it down, however, you can see there it is animated in all its glory. And it's kind of cool because it's a sine wave. What you can do is you can set them down next to each other and it creates this very cool effect that you can actually see a sine wave going up and down sort of in between them. Uh, I find that to be kind of a really cool and awesome thing that this is actually possible. Right, whatever that case may be, that's how easy it can be to add a custom animated block to Minecraft. Right, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate your like. And don't forget to subscribe to more tutorials just like this one. Many thanks also to my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. So, yeah. <laughs>